Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. This is Sohini from South Bay, California and today's topic is this. So here is the PowerPoint that I have explaining the process that uh, I took to choose the topic of my choice. So ever since the ImageNet challenge was released in 2012, uh, there has been a huge push towards deep learning algorithms and methods using images. And these are just normal images that, that you know, we click. So what the, what the ImageNet challenge helped us realize that deep learning uh, algorithms have the power to do something very simple, which the, the human brain is, is very wired to do, but now we can actually teach a machine to do the same. In this case, the example is find the cat. And of course, our brain is so well fine-tuned to, to look and, and find these objects that we quickly say that yes, the cat is at the center and everything else is not. So it's a binary classification that we perform that yes, that picture belongs to that of a cat and the other ones are not. Now, the, the same analogy that we, we took in the, for, for our brains to quickly look at an image and say, hey, that's a cat and the others are not, Somehow, because we haven't, our brain hasn't been trained in that particular way, the same understanding necessarily does not scale to medical images. And there are a lot of reasons why it doesn't scale, and I will cover them shortly. But here's just to take a quick test. If you had just a few images, the same way that you used your own brain to, to detect, you know, find the cat, can you find the pathology in this case? And to, to give you a little background about these images, these are all retinal fundus images, and these images correspond to the anterior part of the of the human eye and these these points right here these are the parts where the optic nerve take the information to your brain so this is how the translation of perception but you know from vision to perception happens now if I'm supposed to just if, if I have no background in, in medical imaging and fundus images and if I just look at these images I might say all these four images seem to be pathological you know they all look a little different from one another and they have some weird features in them you know there are flare-ups here there's this dark patch here probably they all have pathology but then let's look at the results the results is actually just the top right and the bottom left images have pathology while the other ones are perfectly benign so this is myelinated nerve fiber, which is benign. Peripapillary atrophy and neovascularization are actually pretty, uh, they are more um, pathological than the other images. And here you would see that this is just a choroidal nevus, which is just an eye freckle. So it doesn't even bother people having it at all. So what I wanted to present here was as easy as it is for, for the human brain to find uh, find an object in a, in a normal image, the same understanding does not scale to medical images and doctors have to go years and years of practice in order to quickly see images and find pa pathologies. And now imagine if you have to have a million images just to train a neural network to, to say that this is a cat and this is not, then how many images would you need to find something even more fine-tuned, uh, such as this, uh, you know, medical pathologies. Uh, but unfortunately, the medical domain is, is one that has, that suffers a lot from the lack of data, because of course, um, everybody doesn't want their information to be, you know, put out there or, or their medical images to be used for, for public, uh, domain studies however it's, it's easy just to take a you know photo of uh, of something outside and then use it for your uh, experimentation and, and analysis so medical images are extremely rare hard to find and that's why uh, the, the problem of running deep learning applications on medical images becomes even harder because there's actually a huge scarcity of data now let's quickly look at the, 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 the things that we saw so far. So we, we've seen that local and global features corresponding to texture and overall scenery help image-based classification. What do I mean here? So if I go back to the cat, find the cat example, local features means what in this image, uh, the, the first thing my brain sees, and if I am able to code the, the, the convolution neural network or the deep learning model, it would look for features that represent the, the, a face. So you see the eyes, the nose, and the tongue, and the mouth. So this is probably going to tell me that, yeah, there's a face in this particular image. And then global features, all the, the, the furry, furriness and, and the textural information from all of the image put together it'll actually tell you, yes, this is a cat a cat's with, with a cat's face, and this is actually a dog with a dog's face. So what we see is a deep learning uh, or, or deep neural networks, they actually combine local and global features together. However, medical images have a huge challenge, and that's because there is background noise. There's a lot of imaging artifacts 
uh, that are that can be present because of the different resolutions at which the image has been taken. There are variations in imaging systems. So you, if, you, if you see there's a Carl Zeiss Venter, that the image will be very different from if you have a NIDEC or a Topcon or, or some other or, or Cirrus or some other vendor. So there are variations across the imaging systems. Telemedicine poses another problem. That means if you take a picture and send it to you to your doctor, there's some compression that happens because of the channel in which you're transmitting this information. And because of this compression, Im image information can actually be lost. And finally, and the most important reason why deep learning in, in medical imaging is hard, because medical images are actually biometric. So the retinal images that you saw, no retina of two people are actually alike. It's just as unique as a thumbprint, as you might say. So it's a biometric and that's why you see retinal scans happening, uh, you know, uh, in, in the sci-fi movies. So retinal scans are biometrics. And so what you have to find is find generalizable traits in unique data set. So you could actually have two cats that look very similar. So that's why uh, a deep neural network can easily say that this is a cat. However, just as I explained, no two retinal images are same. So like I said, pathology would would translate very differently in, in different people. So you have to find generalizable features across uh, a data set that is extremely unique in itself. And that is why medical images pose a huge amount of uh, issues in, in, in just, you know, creating deep learning algorithms without knowing the domain. And some of the possible solutions are the domain knowledge motivated features and deep learning algorithms together for allowing pathological segmentation and classification. So that is what we will be covering in the in this project that I have selected. I'll be looking at some of the uh, some of the other existing methods such as optic disc segmentation, blood vessel segmentation, diabetic retinopathy and comparison with uh, deep learning models. So this is an example of, of some of the papers that I will be reviewing next week for the literature sur survey that we are beginning is there if you see that these blood vessels, these are the blood vessels or the blood that uh, is, is in your retina. And the, the goal here is to classify the major blood vessels or the thicker blood vessels from the thinner one. And, uh, and if we can find as much actual blood vessel from the non blood vessels uh, as, as possible. Okay, so this will be the last piece, and this is the deliverable that I already have in the week uh, zero uh, Google Drive. And uh, so I'll just go over it very quickly. Again, like I mentioned, my research topic is going to be deep learning and medical imaging, and my title is Advances in Deep Learning for Medical Imaging. And again, I just go over the background, like I just explained the reason why I picked it. I wanted to add a few things here, which might give you some food for thought for you to choose your project. Some of the methods and deliverables that I talk about here is, again, does transfer learning apply between different types of images? So if I have one set of medical images, can I use the pre-trained weights to then uh, train uh, or, or quickly train, you know, from a smaller amount of data set uh, for, for, for the next set of medical images, um, if, if that is possible or not. And also we have seen a lot of literature has shown that segmentation, so like we saw for the blood vessels, segmentation is the best way for pathological diagnosis. So is there a good way to augment the data? Like I mentioned, medical images, they are very scarce. Even the, the largest data sets, you'll probably never see uh, more than like 1200 or 1300 annotated images. And um, generally you will only have a few hundreds where if you see the ImageNet challenge, has like a million images. So you will never find a million medical images that have been annotated and, and put out there. It's very hard to get and you need a lot of man hours to actually annotate the images. So we have to have good augmentation data. So most of the literature for, for this project, I will be focusing on augmentation and augmentation of data. One of the most interesting uh, you know, challenges that, I, that I've seen is you will see some of the medical images such as CT, MRI, X-rays, they are actually single plane. Uh, that means they, have, they, they, they are grayscale. But if you see the normal images, they're RGB, so they're red, green, and blue plane. So is there a possibility to take the one dimension or the grayscale image and make it a colored plane image? And does that help segmentation or not? And there are a lot of ways, and I will, I will demonstrate what they are in the coming weeks, uh, using GANs to do that. Uh, the question could be, can we do that for, for medical images to get a better segmentation accuracy? And that could probably very well be one of the projects that you select.
And finally, it is, can we learn about the features of interest? So it is about the explainability that we have at hand. So this gives you an example of how uh, this, this first week's deliverable is done. Uh, my next assignment I will be releasing on Tuesday, where I will be showing how to do literature review, uh, following by some literature review released next week. So stay tuned for that. Hey, so you're still here. Don't forget to give a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and share this video.